What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the best endgame, greatsword and dagger build in Throne and Liberty. So in this guide I will show you a fully max setup with the best possible tier 1 gear, trades, masteries, skill rotations and everything else. And the best part about this is that for every single build choice I will explain my reasons, also where and how to get this powerful gear. And just overall you will be able to see what a fully maxed tier 1 character will look like and what at the end game you can achieve as well. So if you want to use the best build in the game then let's get right into it. This setup is very unique because at first it may just seem like another bruiser. However, thanks to passive skills like the Vital Force and Cold Warrior, our damage output can be very high. Our playstyle will revolve around rotating your buffs into your DPS skills. Overall, daggers have higher attack speed, so keeping them out will allow us to get additional attacks, while at the same time the greatsword skills will keep us protected and give us one of the best buffs in the game. Also, even though most players prefer to stack as much HP as possible, because of the vital force we will be increasing our damage while getting more tankier at the same time. So let's move over to the setup. For the choice of weapons we are going with the greatsword and the dagger, and first of all we have our skills. So for defensive skill we use the Black Blade, while for active skills we get a Stunning Blow, Cleaving Moonlight, Valiant Brawl, Brutal Incision, Inject Venom, Galatina Blade, Umbral Spirit, Fatal Stigma, Dead Blow, Willbreaker, Gaia Crash and Da Vinci's Courage. As you can see from the gameplay, I don't have all of the same skill icons on my bar. It is because the skill icons will change, depending on our specialization setup. So Gaia Crash will turn into the Frost Cleaving. Then Inject Venom will turn into the Lightning Infusion. Then Valiant Brawl will turn into the Cruel Smite. Then Brutal Incision will turn into the Thunderclouds Bombing. And finally Umbral Spirit will turn into the Thunder Spirit. Then for passives we want to go with Destructive Fang, Assassin's Instincts, Wrathful Edge, Vital Force, Cold Warrior, Victor's Morale, Robust Constitution and Murderous Energy. As for skill upgrade priority, for active skills we mainly want to focus on the Valiant Brawl, Cleaving Moonlight, Brutal Incision, Dead Blow, Gaia Crash, Da Vinci's Courage and Inject Venom. While for passive skills we focus on the Vital Force, Cold Warrior, Assassin's Instincts, Wrathful Edge, Victor's Morale, Destructive Fang, Murderous Energy and Robust Constitution. And then for the rest of your skills they're not as important so just upgrade them as you progress through the game. Also remember to always upgrade all of your skills to blue first before moving on to the purple. Next we have skill specialization and for the stunning blow we want to get the cooldown reduction and damage increase. Then for cleaving moonlight get these three, so consecutive use, effect accumulation and attack speed increase. Then for valiant brawl get the damage increase. Then for brutal incision get the thunderclouds bombing. Or Inject Venom get the Lightning Infusion. Or Galatine Blade get the Charges Time and Cooldown Reduction. Or Umbral Spirit get the Thunder Spirit. Or Fatal Stigma get Damage Increase. Or Dead Blow get the Cooldown Reduction. Then for Willbreaker, don't select anything. Or Gaia Crash get the Frost Cleaving and Attack Speed Increase. And finally for Da Vinci's Courage get the Duration Increase. Next we have Weapon Mastery. And this is how it should look like for the Greatsword. So take a look at the middle and get only this one node, called the Skilled Vitality. Then next go to the bottom and get that entire row. And then lastly go to the top and get everything from the ranged defense up until the overcome snare. And then again this is how it should look like for the dagger. So this time again we start in the middle, but now get everything from Silent Dash up until the Sorrowful Silence. And then go to the bottom and get that entire row. Next let's take a look at our gear. And if you are looking for a full green or blue gear setup then I recommend for you to watch my previous build videos. So first up we are using the Adentus Gargantuous Greatsword with traits like the hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. All gear should be at its max level and you can get this item by defeating the Adentus. Next we have the Lecorius Wicked Thorns with hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. You can get it from the Paola's Dimension Chest or from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Divine Justicier Mask with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion and Cooldown Speed. You can get it from the Butcher's Canyon. Next we have the Supreme Devotion with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. 
Next we have the Shadow Harvester tunic with Magic Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Buff Duration. You can get it from Purple Armor chests or by defeating the Avolus Jacker. As we are using 2 pieces of the death set, so you will get plus 14% critical damage boost. Next we have the Shadow Harvester grips with Mana Region, Magic Evasion and Ranged Evasion. You can get it from the Temple of Slaughter. Next we have the Eben Roar Greaves with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Debuff Duration. You can get it from the Temple of Slaughter. Next we have the Sabotons of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Movement Speed. You can get it by defeating the Dark Wizard or the Berserker Dark Enforcer. Next up we have the Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can only get it from Purple Armor Chests. Next we have the Ancient Saradoma Bracers with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Tyrant's Isle. Next we have the Edged Alabaster Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can get it by defeating the Demon Hoof Shaman. Next we have the Amber Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can get it from Purple Armor Chests. And finally we have the Belt of the Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Butcher's Canyon. Last but not least, if at this current moment you only have blue gear then don't worry, because that gear doesn't really matter and you will soon enough start changing it for the purple pieces. The setup that I showed is the best current gear that anyone can farm, but no matter what gear you choose this build will still work fine, but the setup is just an example of what the best of the best items will look like. Next up we have the stats and depending on your gear you should adjust them accordingly. The goal for your endgame build is to reach 50 strength, 40 dexterity and 40 perception. All of these milestones will give us very high damage and survivability. Next up let's take a look at our gear upgrades. This game doesn't have very typical gear progression. So by this I mean that you will have to upgrade pretty much anything you get. So you'll go from grey to green to blue and finally to purple. No matter at which stage of progression you're watching this video, just keep upgrading your equipment to their max level. And then when you get better gear, just transfer the experience from the old one to the new one. As for my gear recommendations, when you reach level 50, just farm accessible gear by doing open world dungeons. Also you want to extract trades from gear for Lucent. On top of that, you will need to turn important purple gear into lithographs and then sell them on the auction house. Last but not least, for your trades just prioritize the ones that give you the highest damage. And don't forget that you can acquire new trades by using the trait unlock stone. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation will be separated into two parts, the buff phase and the damage phase. So first of all we start our rotation by using Da Vinci's Courage, then Thunder Spirit, and then the Lightning Infusion. And then from here the second phase starts where we do big damage by using Willbreaker, then Frost Cleaving, then Stunning Blow, then Lightning Infusion for the second time, then Fatal Stigma, then Dead Blow, then Galatine Blade, then Thunderclouds Bombing, then Cleaving Moonlight and then we finish it off with the Valiant Brawl. As far as general gameplay tips go, be sure to use your buffs right away when they come back up so you would get the best possible DPS. Also, be sure to have 20 stacks of Thunderclouds before using the Thunderclouds bombing, so you could maintain these high damage numbers. And finally, by having high attack speed it will allow us to get our damage off quicker, because it will lower the time of the animation, which in return will reduce our skill downtime every second. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you are interested in more content then check out my channel and I will see you in the next one, so take it easy, peace.